Hello friends, today I'll be speaking to you about the topic Oliver Goldsmith which was written by Thomas Bevington McCallie. Great stories possess rewriting narratives that begin strong and end strong. Likewise, this prose has a strong theme about description of Goldsmith's life and the strife overcame by him. Let's see a short introduction about Thomas Bevington McCallie. He was born on 25th October 1800 in the United Kingdom. He was educated in Trinity College. He was a British historian and big politician. He also served as a secretary at the War of Great Britain from the year 1839 to 1841. He was an essayist reviewer. He also worked as a paymaster general in 1846. He played a major role in the introduction of English and Western concept in India. He was died on 28th December 1859 in England. Charles Goldsmith was the father of Oliver Goldsmith. His father studied in Elfield. Then he married the daughter of a schoolmaster. He worked as a priest in church and worked partly as a farmer. Now let us see about Oliver Goldsmith. He was born on 10th November 1728 in Elfine, Ireland. Later the place became a remote area, then the people who lived there migrated towards the capital. When Oliver was small, every year his father sent him 200 pounds from the place to Westmouth. Their family made their house on frequented road near the village in Luzon. Oliver first learned letter from the maid, then he studied in the school owned by Quartermaster. There he learned to read, write and arithmetic. Oliver Goldsmith followed Aboriginal race. He wrote many verses in Irish languages. He also admired Irish songs and music. By birth, he was a Protestant, so his family had an interconnection toward the church. Then he came out of the school where he was 9 years old. Later, he went to grammar school and learned ancient languages and cultures. When he came out of the school, he was affected by smallpox and limb pain and lived in the place called Now. He was ridiculed by his own friends and schoolmaster. At the age of 17, Goldsmith worked in Trinity College in Dublin. He lived in a garret. He became low in studies and always been in lecture room. Once he was pumped a constable, then he was scanned by a brutal torture. He was also punished for saying actic stories. Oliver's life was divided into two parts, squalid distress and squalid dispassion. On his 21st year, his father died, so he did not get any income because he did not complete his degree. He earned by singing Irish songs, handed crafts, playing flutes and saying stories in winter. There he was not successful. Then he went as a daughter in opulent family. Then he migrated to America. There was a local king's man who gave him 50 pounds by using the money he reached Edinburgh. In the age of 24, he studied law. He also learned chemistry, history, and supernatural things. At the age of 27, he entered in Leiden University to study physics. Then he migrated towards Flanders. On his travel, he had conversation with Voltaire and Fontanella. Then they planned to get him Paris. He earned there by playing flute. He only had his pet and supper. He did not go to Italy because of some political problems. Then he moved to Dover. There he became a strolling player. There he met Dr. Johnson who helped to work as a school teacher. But he refused the opportunity of East Indian Company and worked as a school teacher for six years. At the time, he wrote many works but it was neglected by the printing press. But some works was printed namely History of England, Sketches of London and Society. In the year 1763, he became the member of a literary club. Dr. Johnson helped him in many ways. After overcoming all the obstacles, his famous work, The Vicar of Wakefield, sold for £60 in the printing press. 
then in the year 1770 he wrote a poem called deserted village that describes about the beauty of ireland and london village in 1773 he wrote his second play she stoops to conquer His first drama was Good Natured Man. His fame was constantly increasing after this place and some other works were History of Rome which sold for 300 pounds, History of Greece which sold for 600 pounds and History of England which sold for 250 pounds. This vast changes in Goldsmith life was due to gaining vast knowledge through travel and art of conversation. and one of the important member in his life was dr shaman johnson one of the greatest english poet who is quoted goldsmith as a man of genius and inspired idiot in the end i would like to mention one of the famous note said by goldsmith our greatest glory consists not in never falling but in rising every time we fall thank you